Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, I already forgot what happened last time, so let's just check it out. That's also really loud. Might a humble fella make a wee comment here? <laughs> Mr. McGilded? Mm. To be sure now, the two fellas who were sat on the roof that testified afore said nothing of the victim falling through the skylight, but it seems to me, my lord, that tis not so much a case of them not saying, but... What is it? Aye. Oh, tis a case of them being unable to say. What? I think perhaps the two fellas do be having something of a compelling reason not to mention what happened. Would you not agree, fine ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Hmm. Oh my goodness, surely not. Those two chaps on the roof? What is she typing? You mean the ones who stuck that knife in the man were... Uh. Wait. What? <gasps> yeah, those were the ones. Just exactly. What exactly are you insinuating here, you you blitherer? <gasps> you rotter, he said. You rotter. What are you insinuating? Okay, what's happening with him? <laughs> this is a flaming outrage. I've a good mind to give you a blinker in a minute. He'll give you a shiner in a minute, he said, and so will I. Mm hmm. Mr. Fairplay. You're effectively accusing me, a city gentleman and well-respected banker. And me, a, a very angry hatter. <laughs> a mad hatter, if you will. <laughs> Suggesting that someone like me could have stabbed that man in the guts, it's its a disgrace. It's scandalous. It's... Uh, I protest. I protest in the strongest possible terms. That's right, I protest too. About you, you rotten scoundrel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Order, order, order. This is not the time. Witnesses. I will not permit this wanton invasion of the stand. Return to the uh, ante room at once. But this is beyond reason, my lord. Uh, 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 it's outrageous. It's very hurtful, you know. <laughs> my lord, if I may comment. Go ahead, Lord Van Zix. It was the defense that incited this outburst from the witnesses. My learned friend has seen fit to abandon all protocol and accuse the witnesses without proof. Accuse? I never intended to. It seems, young Nipponese, that your command of the English tongue is wanting. Hmm. You propose to this court that the victim fell through the skylight from the roof deck of the omnibus. That hypothesis cannot possibly stand without the rooftop passengers being aware of the events. I mean, that's exactly what we're saying. You have branded these gentlemen liars. You have intimate, intimated their criminal guilt. Mm. In our British courts of law, that is what is termed a baseless accusation. Oops. Well, <laughs> I know I was rash to put this idea forward without any actual evidence, but you can't just dismiss it without a second thought. What are we wasting time for? Get them to testify. Testify. <laughs> I thought there was something fishy about that hat from the moment I laid eyes on the fellow. We have to see this matter through now, one way or another. If there's filth and rubbish in our midst, we must dispose of it at once. Oh my god, what's happening? The spectators in the public gallery are, they're in a complete frenzy. Mr. Fair, Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Um, my lord. You will take the stand again and make another formal testimony in reference to the indictment brought by the defense. Yes, my lord. Oh, I didn't come here for this. 
He's like amused. <laughs> There's no time to think this through. Uh, there is. <laughs> All I can do is keep fo pushing forward. Okay, another witness testimony. Refuting the accusation. We were the only two people up on that roof deck, dead or alive, I can swear to that. If anything had happened where we were sitting, don't you think one of, or the other of us would have noticed? In any case, neither of us know the first thing about the victim. We had no reason to kill the man. Oh, okay. That's our first um, point to press. The skylight was shut the entire time, I tell you. We couldn't possibly have opened it. Hmm. If you're so sure the victim fell through the skylight, where's your proof? Okay. So we'll press the third one. Hmm. I must say that on listening to this testimony, it is somewhat hard to imagine. How either witness could have performed any malevolent act on this open rooftop deck without the other noticing forthwith. Well, they're both in on it. <laughs> That's right, you see. We're innocent, I tell you. Is he, like, riding a horse? What's going on there? <laughs> Although, logically, of course, the argument falls down if the two of you were in collusion with one another. Yeah, see? <laughs> According to Investigations by Scotland Yard, the two witnesses share no common dealings. <laughs> Well, I don't trust coppers any more than I trust the stinking rich. <laughs> Something doesn't feel right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The trial is going in our favor, really. So why do I feel so uneasy? Counsel for the counsel for the defense, over to you. Your cross examination, please. Oh yes, my lord. Okay. Okay. So. Well, let's see. Okay, so uh, we're going to press that right off the bat. So you had never met Mr. Thrice Fired Mason before. Oh, wait, I thought, oh, this isn't. Oh, whoops. Oh, Loom, no, not once, never. Anybody? Anybody going to react to that? He'd never met the man before, he said. Never! And you, Mr. First, had no prior dealings with the victim either? That's right. Hatters don't have much to do with brickmakers, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> no, I imagine not. You see, how many different ways can I put this? Neither of us have the remotest connection to the gentleman. <gasps> oh, what does he have to say? Oh, <laughs> Mr. McGilda. Yes, counsel, what can I be doing for ya? <laughs> Did the witness's last statement give you pause or thought somehow? Hmm. Not the remotest connection? Is that right now, I wonder? <laughs> what are you insinuating now? Ah, Mr. Fairplay. Tis been too long, so it has. Eh. <laughs> If I'm not very much mistaken, I believe tis fast approaching, is it not? Your repayment date? I beg your pardon. <laughs> you borrowed 20 guineas from me, sir. At an unconscionable rate of interest. You tricked me. It's extortion. Well, now, is that a touch of begrudgery, is it? The sort of begrudgery that might motivate a fella to pass his crimes off on another? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You may not know him, but you're framing, like, Miguel did, so... And young Mr. First. Me, sir. What do you want with me, sir? You do be making hats for a living, do you not? That their top hat sliding about on your head. Is that one of your own creations, is it? <laughs> I'm still just an apprentice, you understand. I'm learning to find the perfect fit for whatever fine gent walks through the door. Mm-hmm. The perfect fit, is it? Well, tis a very distinctive design, so it is. <laughs> Many customers like it, I tell you. They like a distinctive touch. Customers. Such as thrice-fired Mason. Oh. Is that true? 
There was a photographic print of the victim submitted as evidence of four, my lord. Oh, does it have the same hat? Is it? I can't tell. I can't help thinking that the poor fella's hat looks distinctly familiar, wouldn't you say? Um, oh. Is that? I can't tell. That's... That's one of my hats. <laughs> Aye, that it is. So it would seem the brickmaker was a customer of yours. The sort of customer I'd wager you could have had a wee quarrel with over the distinctiveness of the goods. No, sir. I absolutely not, sir. Well, there's really nothing more to add. It wouldn't be right to say that the two fellas here haven't the remotest connection to the victim, you see. I rest my case. <laughs> you little weasel. Yeah, this feels really weird. He's better at this than I am. Gosh, Mr. McGilded has certainly been th thorough in his research, hasn't he? Hmm. Please, don't let me li me little interruption hold up the proceedings. Okay. The skylight was shut the entire time, I tell you. We couldn't have possibly opened it. Um, should we just, like, press all of them then? Let's just, let's press this one. Because they could have opened it, quite possibly. Like, why are they denying that they could have opened it? Are you quite certain about that? That the skylight was shut the entire time? I'm going to lose my block with you in a minute. <laughs> He's going to lose his rag with you in a minute. It block or rag? Keep it keep it together. <laughs> that's that's what he said. Take a look for yourself. Go on. You see, it shut fast now, just like it was on the night. It's not to say that it could have been closed. So it is, of course. A fellow the size of Mr. Mason could likely break through right through it, still and all. What? Just looking at the size of the thing, you understand. Now you hold on there a minute, sir. The size of the thing means nothing. Not on its own. Let's consider the bigger picture, picture here, shall we? <laughs> Let's stop biting our cane, shall we? <laughs> I'm glad he said something. Um, I was riding the omnibus on another occasion when, um, well, I broke wind loudly. <laughs> I shocked myself with it as it happens. <laughs> this is unexpected confession, Mr. First. Oh, I just mean to say, well, the point is, I tried to open the skylight, you see. But just my luck, I couldn't make it budge. The stench was terrible. Everyone was looking daggers at me, sir. I was, went as red as rouge. I did. Well, why would... He's outside. Why would he have open the skylight? Are you, are you expecting me to sentence you? Oh, no, sir. The point is, the skylight can't be opened. I tried and tried. Oh, what does she have to say? Do you have something to say about that, Miss Lestrade? It seems really suspicious, right? Like, something's going on here. <laughs> Miss Lestrade. It opens. <laughs> The skylight. This is what we're talking about, right? <laughs> I don't know what kind of accent I'm giving them. Whoa, whoa, there. Whoa, there. No need for that. Oh, my God. All of them skylights open dead easy. More easily than you can load that weapon. <laughs> That's a lie. I tell you. Otherwise, when I broke wind, I... You can't do it from inside, you mug. <laughs> oh. Look, a few weeks ago, I was up on the roof deck of one of them drags. And I had a great haul. I mean, I had purses coming out me ears. Miss Lestrade, this is not the forum to be eulogizing on the subject of your criminal activities. <laughs> well, anyway, I had a bit of a scare. When I lifted the last bloke's purse, it got wise to me. All four of them surrounded me, so I couldn't top... I couldn't... Up the bus and leg it. <laughs> so what I did was I used the skylight, opened the catch, and jumped right through. What? 
Yeah, the catch for them skylights is on the top side. That's why you can't open them from the cabin. The skylight opens from the roof deck. Mm-hmm. Climb up, climb up onto the roof of the omnibus at once and verify this witness's claims. Okay. Mmm. Oh my hat. <laughs> There you have it. See? Nice. Order, order, order. So, it appears that this street girl statement is quite true. I don't believe it. The skylight opens. And from the roof deck. Mr. Naruhodo. This could be the clue we've been looking for. Has to be. Well, counsel for the defense, please continue with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. So, the skylight opens. Perhaps I should investigate for myself. Okay, let's take a look. Um, how do we look at our... Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So... But now the catch has been undone. We should be able to open it. Okay. Nice. Can we see anything from this angle? Okay, maybe we should go inside. Let's go inside. Oh, you can see blood. Yes, it does open very wide, doesn't it? Wide enough to kick someone like you through. Certainly, Mr. Naruto. <laughs> Why someone like me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is it? Look, just here. Look at this. That's without question. It's blood. Why would there be a blood stain there? Surely, it can't be unrelated to the case, can it? I mean... It's r staring right at us in the face, right there. I don't think there's anything else. I don't think there's anything else we need. I mean... Case closed, to be honest. <laughs> okay, so where can we present that? Oh, t right here. Okay, we'll present this. There you go. There's my proof. Mm -hmm. On the night in question, the victim was fatally stabbed in the stomach, and immediately afterwards, the victim's body was pushed through the skylight into the cabin below. Those are the facts, and the irrefutable proof is right there. Remains clearly visible in the omnibus that stands before us today in this very courtroom. Nice. That's, that's utter humbug. You can't possibly have any evidence. No, you can't. I mean, we didn't do what I tell you. It's impossible. Irrefutable proof here in this courtroom? Yeah, they're so like, they're so adamant about not doing it that it makes you wonder like what actually happened though. <laughs> Counsel, my lord. I believe everyone would appreciate a little clarification here, hmm? Where exactly within the omnibus is this evidence to which you allude? You will point out what it is that proves the victim fell from the roof deck through the skylight. Okay, it's... wait. I thought it disappeared. I was like, are you serious? Got it! Got it! By Jupiter, is that blood? Nice. This blood stain proves two things. Firstly, when the incident occurred, the skylight of the omnibus was open. What? And secondly, the victim was already bleeding when he fell through the opening. Oh my. <laughs> and so it follows that Mr. McGilded, who was inside the enclosed cabin himself at the time, cannot possibly be guilty of this crime. Nice. <gasps> we got you. Mm-hmm. Order, order, order. But, but, but the blood could have sprayed up there when the fellow was stabbed inside the cabin. And only found its way to that one particular spot on the skylight? Sure. And that would be very convenient. Ugh. 
And let's keep it in mind that the skylight catch can only be unfastened from the roof deck. I myself wouldn't have been able to open it now, would I? Did they do it? I can't- I still can't tell. There's no way to know for certain, is there? If the gent really fell through the skylight, I mean. Why don't you have a good look at the floor of the cabin between the two seats, Mr. First? Yeah. Tis all too plain, if you see. There's the aftermath that shows the poor fella dropped from a fair height right there, so it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all... Lies. <gasps> My fellow jury members. I think we can all agree that this is clear proof of the defendant's innocence, can't we? I believe we can, yes sir. It's clear to me now where the filthy rubbish can be found in this courtroom. <gasps> So, they thought they could pull the wool over my eyes, did they? She has nothing to say. Oh shit. I won't tolerate any of the guild's carriages being sullied with blood. I won't tolerate it. Oh, I always do. That nice gentleman who gave us that delightful part couldn't have done such a thing. On three then, everyone. One, two... Shit. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god. A chilling performance, Mr. McGilded. Oh, and what would you be referring to there now, Lord Van Zeeks? A blood stain on the frame of the skylight. Such evidence is null and void. What? Why? For one extremely simple reason. That smear of blood never existed. Objection. What? Are you ta what are you talking about? It's there for all to see and it's clearly blood. Objection. I personally attended Scotland Yard's investigation of the omnibus. The officers involved went over the carriage with a, with a fine tooth comb. So I can state with absolute surety no such smear of blood existed in the carriage. At least not until this trial began. What? Are you su are you suggesting, Lord Van Zeeks, that this stain of blood was fabricated, my lord? Yes, and while this court has been in session. What? That's crazy. <laughs> what a palaver. I must say, I didn't expect such crude reasoning from a prosecutor of your standing, Lord Van Zeeks. <laughs> what? But, I'm Magnus McGilded, a fella known all over the capital for his fine contributions to public life. I don't take kindly to slander, and I'll fight it to the bitter end. Even if it's rolling off the tongue of the Reaper of the Bailey. Mr. McGilded, I realize that this is your first appearance in court as the accused. However, I am well aware of your involvement behind the scenes in a great many affairs of dubious nature. You're very adept when it comes to avoiding getting your own hands dirty. Adept? <laughs> and each time it happens that a case you're involved in is investigated, you adapt the facts. Adapt the facts? What does that even mean? Is he like a mob boss? Have we been defending a mob boss this whole time? <laughs> when you wield a fortune the size of Mr. McGilded's, however ill-gotten it may be, nothing is impossible. Tampering with evidence, manipulating the scene of a crime, bribing witnesses. Mm. I toast your ability to concoct the most convenient of stories, sir. Tut tut, Lord Van Zeeks. This will not do to be sure. Well, it will it now, Council. Oh, no, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's fair to say this does all sound like a rather far-fetched excuse by a desperate man. The blood on the skylight didn't exist, you say? But if yous will, I'll cast your minds back. Is it not true that the omnibus there has been in the courtroom the entire time? How could Enwin possibly have put a smear of blood in it without the word and his wife seeing? World and his wife seeing. <laughs> Is that right now, Council? 
I mean, it's true. The omnibus has been in full view the entire time that court has been in ses session. My learned friend. Oh shit. Are we like, is this like the enemy of my enemy? Is my friend. <laughs> Here's to hearing your opinion on this matter in your own words. Okay. As you wish. Could someone have tampered with the omnibus during this trial? If you're asking me, I think... I don't know. It's out of the question, right? It could have been possible. Are we really saying it could have been possible? I don't know. We'll say it could have been possible. Because nothing's impossible, right? As a defense lawyer, it's my job to advocate for the defendant as best as I can. But still, I feel as though there's something even more important at stake here. Right. There's something fishy. <laughs> there is no evidence to suggest that the defendant did as my learned friend suggests. However, in terms of having the opportunity to carry out the alleged tampering, there is one possibility. Is there? Explain yourself, counsel. Is there? Oh. Yes, there is. It seems my learned Nipponese friend has no intention of running from this deceit. Deceit? I'm sure everyone still remembers clearly the- Oh, right! The recess that we were forced to take. As a result of the smoke grenade fired by the witness currently in the stand, Miss Gina Lestrade. <gasps> yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very fishy indeed. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Nice flashback. I like how uh, Van Zeeks immediately was like, take care of the omnibus. Secure the omnibus. The courtroom was filled with smoke and everyone was thrown into confusion. All of us were made to leave this chamber. In that brief interval, under the veil of smoke and in all the chaos. <gasps> Whoa, that was like a it was like a 720 rather than just a 360. <laughs> it could have been possible to steal inside the omnibus. Oh my. It's a crazy notion. Are you wise? <laughs> What are you trying to pull, you, you rotten feckless gouger? <laughs> feckless gouger? <laughs> You're supposed to be defending me! <laughs> Tis a wicked plot! Tis a plot to undermine me, so it is! Oh my god, I almost dropped my controller. Whatever you think this is, it changes nothing. The facts are the same. After this courtroom was evacuated earlier as a result of the smoke grenade, a number of inconsistencies materialized in relation to the omnibus. Okay, and then we'll figure out all those inconsistencies in the next episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye, guys.